very much, and thank you all for being here. Really, we're here to celebrate you and the jobs you all have created and represent. I want to ask a question. Who was here last year at SPI in, was it Los Angeles? Who was here the year before in Anaheim? Who was here the year before in San Diego? And San Jose the year before that? So, I, sorry, you weren't looking around to watch, but there was a pretty good indication there of exactly what we've been talking about. This incredible curve we're on, creating jobs, filling this hall, getting a bigger and bigger industry that is now ready for prime time. In fact, we are the main game in this country, and we've got to start to own that fact and show up like we are the job creating machine uh, that will drive the future. So that's what I'm meant to be talking about, jobs and what they can get us in a political season, 2012. Um, we deserve more credit than we get. We speak too humbly and too softly, and we have to start telling our story, just as we've been told, particularly going into this election year, where it's clear they're gunning for us. I don't know whether they're bad guys or just competitors or whatever, but the other side is framing the debate. You've failed. The solar industry is a flop. You're all welfare recipients. You suck. Solyndra, Solyndra, Solyndra. That's the message that's coming out, and the opposite is true. Solyndra proves the point. Solyndra couldn't compete because we have driven costs down. Solyndra is an example of what this industry has achieved by scaling the technology, making it more, more affordable and more powerful without any new whiz bang technologies. We've got what we need, we just need to do more and more of it. And so we need to start singing our song better. Which brings me to the joke, I don't mean Steve when I say jobs, although in a way I could be invoking him. I, I wrote this deck when it's only very brief, so don't worry, but last week when the hagiography was going on about the man. And if you think about anything he had to say, it was keep it simple, Sally and Sam. It was get the design right and sell people what they want, how they want it. And what the American people want now is jobs. The reason they're out in the streets, occupying them from Oakland to Washington and New York and everywhere else, is because they don't have them. We have them. We are offering them. The US politicians all pretend this is what they're after, and yet they're falling for this hype about our failure, and we have to reverse that trend. So we have to think like Steve Jobs and start telling our story simply. Steve and the internet and the IT and computer industries didn't have what we have to compete with. They didn't have an incumbent entrenched technology set that they were displacing. They had an open playing field, if you like. We have to take out a hundred years of industrial influence in our politics. We all know who owns Congress, right? It's the railroads from way back when. Well, guess what rail carries in this country? 50% of its freight by weight is coal. It's the coal industry in this country. It's the oil and gas industry. We all know the influence they peddle, the, the subsidies they get, the hundreds of billions of dollars, not hundreds of millions of dollars that they've received over the last century. That's what we're undoing through our work, and that's why we have to be aggressive in talking to it. Um, I, I know we've seen this slide a couple of times today, so I'm a bit embarrassed, and Andrea's was much better looking than mine because it was bigger. Um, bigger is always better. But, you know, yeah, we're in Texas, right? So, you know, I, I can't stress how important this is enough. Mike is absolutely right. We have to tell our own human stories that, that tell these numbers in personal narratives. So for Sanjevity's story, we're a, we're a small, innovative company doing some of what Solar City does, the residential piece. We serve with the solar leasing product. We take that to nearly as many states as them with 300 people in Oakland, California. Our core innovation, the thing that Planet Forward recognized us for, is that we size and design those systems over the internet. We don't do site visits to quote to a customer. We've been doing that for three years using call, sale, call center based sales or inside sales for three years to serve customers from Oakland to New York and New Jersey. And that means our cost structure is much better and the convenience and experience of the customer is much better. That's why we've been able to grow so rapidly, and we're now going gangbusters. We're the second only in the last quarter to Solar City in that space. We've just brought in Bravo Bank to finance here in the residential space in America, which is a big good news story to, to further tell this narrative. But the people we're employing is what's important. You know, we've got John O'Donnell sitting over here, he used to work at Levi Strauss and Company, doing brand engagement for them. We're trying to bring that sort of retail smarts and also 
good news is there's some displaced people from retail and real estate and other sectors that we can learn from and benefit from as an industry. We've got military veterans working for us in field management. We've got people out of all walks of life. One of the things I love most about our company is with the remote solar design tool that we have that's computer based, we sit in Oakland engineering systems for New York, New Jersey. Like I said, there's 25 kids at computer terminals designing an engineering system and sending quotes out to hundreds of customers a day sitting at these terminals. We've created a new job, the remote solar designer, and we've employed dozens of them in our base. That's the positive news story that this graph depicts. But more important still is what it, it, it counters and the fact that the economies have a dead cat bounce at best and the fossil fuel boys generating electricity are shedding jobs. You know, that is a very significant fact in the political story of our times. They are super profitable, as we all know. They are receiving more subsidies than us, as we all know. Their prices are going up, as we all know. And they're destroying jobs and destroying other value in terms of health and the studies that Mike referred to. But the fact that they're destroying jobs while they're growing, while their prices are going up, is a real Achilles heel, and we have to emphasize that difference. We create jobs while we grow, while our prices are coming down, while we're becoming bigger, and while our subsidies are actually coming down relative to our size. That's a very good news story, and we need to draw that out. And it, you know, the oil and gas sector, it's the same, and we're only just about displacing oil as an electricity source in the United States, let alone gas as an equivalent number. They're about one and a half percent we're getting there. The, the oil boys in the last five years have shared 11,000 jobs. Exxon, Chevron, BP and Shell, those four companies alone, 11,000 jobs. Four and a half thousand jobs just last year. We all know that they were the most profitable corporations in history during those years. So they're shedding jobs while making money and receiving more and more subsidies every year to do it. That difference needs to be drawn out more. Um, and this is the story we get to tell, which I call the staircase of opportunity. This is, this is actually a conservative graph. People will differ with it, but for the sake of the argument, just bear with me. Look at where we've been. You all are pioneers. You've built your businesses. You've employed your employees. You've done wonderful things in the economy. And you've installed clean electricity for future generations that isn't going to cook your kids. You have something to be proud of. But it was relatively small if you look at the size and scale of the staircase we're climbing. You know, just since Seoul Power International first got named, I think, the Seoul Power International, which was the San Jose Conference, correct me if I'm wrong, well, I think somewhere around that, sort of 2006 era, you know, we were only fiddling around at seven gigawatts installed on Earth. We're now somewhere like 60. We think that was really hard yards, right? That was, that was long, hard hours working for midnight oil. And yet, look at what's ahead of us. And again, this is conservative. This is only 5x over the next decade. And I think we're going to do a lot better when our levelized cost of electricity is so much cheaper than these other guys. The market will move us and will demand that we displace all of it very rapidly. And so we have to build businesses that can accommodate the curve, an S-curve, even steeper than that. But my point here is to go back to this. If we were able to add those jobs in the last 12 months, coming out of the Great Recession, fighting the fights we've had to fight, dealing with all the negativity and the nabobs of nattering nonsense that come out of DC, and then we have this to go, think about how many jobs are going to be created. That's the story that the politicians and people in DC need to hear. And they need to start giving us what we've got, because we check all the boxes. We provide jobs and jobs and jobs to refer back to the starting point that Tom made. This is all that matters in an election cycle. This goes back centuries. People that pretend to represent us in elected or other office who don't get it, that people that are unemployed will get angry and will go to the streets, tend to lose their office. That's the phenomenon we're seeing in the Occupy Wall Street movement. We're seeing that tension start to come out. What we do is create jobs. That's the solution for the politicians that want to keep their office. They're starting to sound like they, they believe that and they want to start providing jobs. They need them to start supporting the solar industry. You know, this rhetoric that we're hearing from Rome in the last few days about 1603 needs to be extended, otherwise it's like a tax that will destroy jobs. That's a great line. We should all be parroting that. We should all be saying that and whatever CEO wants us to do, and the VP of External Affairs is right here to tell us, 
we should do it, we should get out, we should start to show up and be counted. If you think about the coal mining industry, when they want something, they get it. They go to the state house, whichever state they're in, they go to Congress if they need to, they'll surround the legislature with trucks and with bodies and they'll say, I need this, I want certainty for my industry because I've got jobs. Do you know how many jobs there are in coal mining in this country? There are 60,000. There's 100,000 solar workers in this country. Why don't we go and take the state houses? Why don't we go and surround Congress? And we say, we want certainty. We don't want this nonsense of on again, off again crap. We are building businesses. We're attracting hundreds of millions of dollars of investment. And we're building thousands and thousands of meaningful, well-paid jobs that will not be offshore and provide Americans long-term careers. That's the stuff that politicians need to hear. But we, as an industry, need to get involved and get organized so that we're there. All the stuff Mike said about we've got to communicate, we've got to do. But communication is never better done than in person. So, you know, sign the petitions, respond to Andrea next year when she asks you to fill out the Solar Job Census survey, or Phil, you know, this is one of the things we can do. We can do all these online and social media strategies but we also have to turn out in person and tell our local electors, go to the meetings, go to the fundraisers, say, I'm with the solar industry. In, in Oakland, California, where we are, recessed city, right? Bad reputation, kind of depressing. Uh, Oakland is recognizing us as a game changer. They're giving us some award next week. We're like revitalizing the port district called Jack London Square because we've got 300 kids working at computers selling solar across America with an innovative business model. That's the stuff that we need to pick up and sing our song better. You all have similar stories. You've done that in your communities, in your places. You know, we, we have a different view to Solar City. We trust subcontractors to do the job right on the roof and do the installation. And we, therefore, are in a brand alliance with local electrical contractors all across the country doing solar installations. We know they're great tradespeople. They're doing wonderful work and they've got a labor warranty to back it. And we want to celebrate with them, get them out, turn them out to the political events and start doing this work of telling our stories and getting this narrative heard so that people recognize we've got jobs, jobs, jobs. Next year, this is the conversation and we should get the certainty we require to continue to attract investment. We should be guaranteed the, the ITC at the very least and 1603 if we think that's doable in the Congress and we should get the states likewise to commit long term to our industries. You know, it's not enough that we have rebates sometimes and rebates go away, but we have utilities sometimes mandated to interconnect us and then sometimes they decide not to. That is insufficient. I suggest that we get organized and we do something like a, a clean energy pledge or a solar pledge where we tell every candidate running in every race in the 2012 election cycle, sign here on the dotted line, tell me you back solar because solar creates jobs or you don't get our support. That's the kind of chutzpah that this industry should start to demonstrate, and we have the power. We're 100,000 strong. I implore you to get involved. Thank you very much.